Yeah. So whatever they are, we're also on the for them this now. Sure. side pocket somewhere. Let me, um, I'm stuck here, War. Yeah. Oh, you can just move the computer. Uh, yeah, do it. I'm just getting it out of the way. Yep. I think we're good. You want to do a test on everybody? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Testing. One, two, three. Testing. Can you hear me, Warren? Testing. How's he looking? Okay. Good. Yep, test, test. Good. Yeah, he's good. Testing, testing, testing. You know, you should do radio, dude. You've got the <laughs> voice for this. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, Coach does uh, football. You do the stadium. And I thought, wow, this, oh, uh, yeah, he should be doing sports somewhere. <laughs> okay. Did I embarrass you already? We no, just started. No, okay. Nice. You probably heard that a bunch of times, so. All right. Whenever you're ready, would, um, turn me down. Actually, let's just have every coach, because I can hear so, okay. so what do you want? I can turn me down. Yeah, I, I'd probably just turn down the gain on most oh. of the mics because it's really... All right, you go ahead and control it. You go ahead and do it, buddy. You know what you're doing. Just make sure you got the sound up on your end. Yeah, sound up on my end is just really Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. He made me... Okay. Come for lunch one time. As long really as those good. guys are up, it's all wow. healthy too. All right. <coughs> all right, you run your intro, and we'll rock and roll here, buddy. Can you go ahead and mute the mics, please. Mute Oh, you're a pain. Okay.
And good evening, and thanks for joining us here for dinner at Crepes and Creams in the Westlake Shopping Center. And tonight really is our opening night here for Sports Blow. We're going to get the inside dope here tonight from several high school coaches here in the area. And we're talking about basketball. Really, if you think about it, a lot of the season is closed or the door is closed for a lot of teams and players that have really worked hard throughout the season. Tonight, we're going to be visiting with Coach Terry Anderson from Northridge High School, also Coach Troy Grafey from Greeley Central High School, and Coach Brett Klopfill from Greeley West High School. Gentlemen, thanks for showing up tonight and putting up with us here tonight. This is our opening show. So again, this is one of those situations where we're going to kind of go the live thing, the hit and miss. So if it's a little bit raw at times, put up with us, right? But the good thing is you get crepes and creams. Does that sound like a good deal for you? All right, so we're going to open it up, and you know, it, this sounds like class, because I know several of you are teachers or have taught, so do the introductions. We'll start with Troy Grafey. Uh, what do you need? Just, uh, just tell us who you are, how many years, my bad, how many years you've been coaching, and uh, what you do at Greeley Central besides basketball. Uh, Troy Grafey, I coach uh, at, at Greeley Central High School. I've been the head coach at Greeley Central for eight, I just finished my 18th year. Uh, I've been at Greeley Central for 21 years. Uh, I teach over there, I've taught social studies, health, PE, and I also coach girls tennis. So. Yeah, you just got you just got in from uh, coaching, yeah, how'd that go today? I got the coffee here, because it's a little <laughs> chilly out on the <laughs> yeah, court, so. I bet, so you're the, you're the warrior. You don't really, no rest for the weary, as they say. And coach. Uh, Terry Anderson, uh, this is my sixth year over at Northridge um, as the head coach. Before that, uh, I coached over at UNC for, for a couple years with Coach Tab Boyle um, right when I finished playing over there. So uh, I've been in the city now for, for about a decade doing a few different things. So just, just glad to, to be able to stick around the community and um, love where I'm at. Got to do a shout out to Jay Heinrichs. Obviously, you're working with him. And uh, I bet you're really enjoying Ames right now. Absolutely. I'm over at Ames now as the, the program coordinator for their physical education and uh, <sighs> recreation department. Um, Jay Hendricks is my director, um, and he kind of pulled me away from UNC where he was the AD when I was over there doing some, some coaching and some marketing and sales. So uh, absolutely great to, to be able to get back with him. He's, he's an amazing uh, individual, an amazing boss, so I'm glad we're to be at Ames with him, just be able to stick in the community and, and do some good things. He was uh, terrific as you and I talked before coming on when we did the state game several years ago. We couldn't have got any better treatment than from Jay and it was just a pleasure to work with him. So I'm glad you get a chance to team up with him. First class all the way at all times and that's why it's just, just more than anything, more than a great boss. Um, He's just a great friend, a great person um, to, to be around and have. And Hopefully, you get a you'll get a bonus after all this plug in here for him. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Brett, it's all yours. Yes, uh, Brett Clofill. I'm from uh, uh, Greeley West High School. This is my second year uh, there. I, I was at Weld Central before that, and uh, went to school uh, in Pueblo, but actually grew up in Greeley and, and played at Greeley West a, a long time ago. So uh, <laughs> I actually work outside of the high school at the Department of Transportation. But uh, like I said, second year going on third and uh, grew up around here, so very familiar with everything. But uh, I'm excited about what we have going. You know, I'm excited as far as having these guys here because I really have felt for a long time, and as I was telling you coaches, it's always nice to spotlight not only the kids, which we do a lot of, both you know the local radio station KFK here in town, but also us, and it's really nice to kind of get to know you and your thoughts. We have several generations, if you want to call it that. I won't quite go that far, but obviously, Coach, you've been around for 18 years over at Greeley Central. You're kind of the mid-statesman, if you will, Terry, with six years, and of course, Brett, two years with Greeley West. So I'm going to start off with a quote here. We had a chance to visit with Coach Rick Herrig, the baseball coach at Fairview High School. I don't know if you know the news, but Rick has been there 25 years, also a teacher like you guys have been, and he just took a job with the St. Louis Cardinals. So he is now heading towards St. Louis. They're getting ready for their season. And he made the comment that playing baseball is a lot like life. 
all the challenges that go, the ups and downs that go for the players as well as the coaches. And I want to take that into your realm. Really, any sport, it's pretty much the same. It doesn't matter if it's football, basketball, baseball. Really, there is life and life lessons. How does that approach go with you guys as far as your personal philosophy as a coach? Do you look at creating, helping these young men become mature men? Do you look at their educational piece besides the obvious basketball skills? So whoever wants to go in first, I'm just curious to hear what your philosophy when you go out and work with these young men. Well, I, I will say that uh, it, it, first and foremost, it has to be an educational process. If, uh, if, it's, if it's not, there's, there's no reason for us really to be doing it. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm really happy with, you guys are familiar with uh, Mr. Billings downtown, and he's kind of helped us initiate this thing that we call uh, Shift Y, and it's the whole, the whole idea that, uh, that uh, our athletic programs are not just extensions of the educational process, but they are a, a, an educational process within themselves. And, uh, I just I think that that it has to be an educational process. It has to be this idea of making people better men and, and better better people. Um, I, I've, I'm fond of telling the story that I've you know I've been doing it for 18 years, and in those 18 years we've had we've had a lot of good teams and a lot of good players, but we have had exactly one player who ever got recruited to play college basketball. <laughs> We've had a couple players that walked on, but yeah. one player that, was, that, was, that actually got a scholarship <clears throat> to play at a college. And so, you know, if it's not an educational process, I've, I've, I've been wasting a lot of time trying to create better basketball players. Really? Yeah, and to piggyback off coach, uh, you know, everything we're doing is, is trying to uh, prepare our, our student athletes to, to be more successful after high school. And so just the, the little things that apply to uh, being an adult, being on time, working with people, um, being accountable, being disciplined, the, the little things that we're trying to teach, it, it's the same as uh, when they go and apply for their first job and the competitive aspect. And so yeah, it's, it's really just uh, an early course of real life and, and obviously the, the best thing that I think the reason that we like to do it, uh, the, the team aspect, you got to be able to work with other people and work for people. And so, yeah, I mean, basketball and sports in general, I think it's just a, a warm-up kind of preparation for, for real life. Especially taking direction. I know at times, well, I remember when I was young, way back when, I still can remember that, by the way, <laughs> and, uh, you know, at, when you're young and you're full of oats, and it sometimes is hard to take direction from an adult, and an adult that's very educated. For some of you, a lot of basketball experience, some of you college, working on college teams, and sometimes those kids don't always want to take direction. Is there a difference today coaching some of the younger folks, say, You've been around, obviously, and so, and you guys are players, of course. Is the basketball player or the culture different to be able to coach today with the, the current generation? Um, I think it's different from, I know, uh, when I was playing, um, I know Coach can uh, give his, his thoughts from when he was coaching then to now. Um, I think it is a different type of type of game. Could be good or, could you see it as good or bad? Yeah. Um, with anything in life, life changes and evolves, um, and so has the type of players that you you, you get now uh, at the high school level. Um, yeah. So for whatever reason, um, society, it's not just, just basketball, society has evolved and society mm -hmm. has changed. Yes. Um, and so you just have a different type of player, different type of mentality, different type of norms um, that you have to deal with. And, and so I think there's, there's those positives for some that can evolve and change with the times. Um, and for those that might not want to, it could be a struggle. Because um, I think it is, a, it is a different type of game, and there's different type of players, different type of personalities, different type of um, family dynamics that you have to deal with now than, than might have been involved in the past. Um, so it is a new day and age. Uh, but if you can change um, and adapt, I think it, it can be a positive change for you and for your team. Yeah, I agree with that. Troy, as far as, I mean, you've been around 18 years, you've probably seen some changes as well. Well, 
Yeah, I, I think you know kids are kids, right. and, I, and, uh, and so there, you know, there's always been kind of a generational aspect in, in trying to get your message across. But I think the, what I have noticed in our program um, the past few years is uh, kids are, are a lot more. You know, they, they see, they, they got ESPN, they, they see a thousand games a year, they, they got instant highlights on their phone, and, and, uh, and they're interested in those, those highlight moments, it seems like. And uh, so it's been, we've, we've, we've had to work a lot harder at convincing kids the, about, about the value of being part of a team, about how important being a teammate is, about how for you know that 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 pass that leads to the pass that leads to the basket, how that is just as valuable to us as you know the highlight play that that, and, and so sometimes we've got we've had to work a little bit harder convincing kids of, of of the importance of doing some of the things that maybe aren't quite as noticeable. It's a good point, the whole teamwork thing, and I think it's you know you watch the NBA today and even college ball, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But the big play is huge now. The big 70-foot shot we saw here recently. Got to mention, we we did we got Connor Thompson's shot at the end of the third period, and literally with a second and a half, 70 feet or more. I didn't measure it, but you should see how many hits we got on that, and it was passed and shared around. So I would agree. I mean, you know, being seen in all the media that's out there. We're going to take a short break. You are watching Sports Blow here from Crepes and Creams in the Westlake Shopping Center. Of course, this is the place to come. They're open Monday through Saturday from 11 to 7. We're going to take a short time out. We'll be back, and we're going to talk more with the coaches and talk about not only how basketball has changed overall with the culture but also in regards to the way that they coach we'll be back here in just a moment Welcome back to Sports Blow. We're here live at Crepes and Creams in the Westlake Shopping Center. And we are talking with several coaches. As you can see, it's Troy Grafey, Terry Anderson, and Brett Klopfell. I think I got it right. Yeah. All right, finally got it right. Okay, so obviously we've talked about the culture, some of the changes, family dynamics. Terry brought up, very important. That's changed a lot. And I've worked also as a social worker in my past. I've seen a lot of changes personally here in Weld County, not always bad, but just as you said, we have to adjust. And I think it's the same with any sport. And as we also talked about to summarize, a lot of what happens today for coaches and players, it's all about adjustments and really kind of going back to some of the roots in the past, teamwork, those kinds of things. So that being said, transitions, you've all seen them. And what that means is the next question for any of you to answer is, on any given year or years, whether it's two or three years or one year, your team gels. We saw that with Greeley West this year. When Brett first came in, I think you were 10 and 14 and then the big bulge. You guys have also seen some very good moments in your programs. What is it like as coaches 
after you've come off of that high year, we're just seeing that with the Broncos. They're losing half their team right now. They're going to have to readjust. What is it like as a coach, and how do you coach, and how do you work with that as far as making that transition? Are you getting your next generation ready ahead of time, or do you just kind of go in raw? I'm curious as a, as a spectator, how do you react to the transitions with the changing teams? Loaded question, I know. I think what we've tried to do, and I constantly say we because our program is uh, 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 Brett Shaw and Kevin Ronke have been my longtime assistants. And uh, the three of us have, have worked pretty diligently in trying to create a program that we're very proud of. And uh, the difficult thing for us has been to, uh, to maintain kind of keep the faith, as it were, to uh, keep doing the things that we truly believe in, keep doing things the way that we think they should be done, uh, and, at this, and and not lose not lose our perspective, not get caught up in the, in the wins and losses as much as um, in the idea of, of trying to teach our kids and trying to make them better people and, and, and trying to be true to our program. We're, we're so proud of the history of our program, you know, Greeley Central, you can't walk in the gym without know, noticing the banners and seeing the history. And, and so we feel like we've got a real obligation to honor the people who played and who have coached at that great school. And so at the same time, we've got to make sure that we, uh, uh, that we honor the kids that are there now and, and, and we certainly meet their needs. Uh, but I, I just, basketball's a beautiful game in that uh, good basketball is always going to be good basketball, whether, you know, we're, everybody now is, is running pick and roll stuff. And, and that, you know, that kind of disappeared in the 80s and yeah. 90s, and now it's back. And that's what they did in the 50s and 60s. And so the good basketball is always going to be, is going to be fundamental. And so we got to maintain that, uh, that focus and at the same time try to honor our kids and, 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 and keep, our, keep our perspective on them as well. Yeah, Co Coach touched on the, the big picture of trying to keep you know, your program moving forward and keep everybody together. I think we also face the yearly challenge of you know, that specific group and what fits them best and uh, how you attack uh, every year. And it's just a new challenge every year. Um, your younger guys grow up a year, they get more responsibility. Uh, and then you have new kids coming into the program that need to learn the right way. But, uh, you know, I, I think we could probably all agree that we're not going to have that high level of talent year in, year out. So we're trying to find little ways to uh, get an edge, get a break. And so, uh, you know, specifically, I think we, I try to do uh, things a little bit differently with each team uh, to try to adjust and uh, whatever fits that group best um, in, in kind of the small picture. But Coach is right in the big picture. You want to have that consistency with the certain values and morals that your, your program uh, wants to represent, and, and trying to do that every year is, is extremely important. I bet. Yeah, I think it's just like what, what, what Coach said. Um, it's, it's really small changes year to year, because um, you will have different personnel, you have different yeah. players, experience, not experience. But those main core values that you have, those stay consistent. It, it's number one about making mm -hmm. them better people, uh, making them better students, uh, teaching those fundamentals. That doesn't change. Even if you have a team of all experience, you still have to talk about the teamwork, uh, talk about being a great teammate, leadership, uh, getting to class on time. Those things don't change. Um, it might be a change if you have someone 6'5 one year and the next year your tallest guy might be 5'11. Right. So those are the adjustments that, that you might have to make. Uh, but at the end of the day, with any good program, you have those staples um, that are consistent every single year, um, and that's what you're going to live by. Um, so just like within single games, there's ebbs and flows, and those those years you'll have guys on board and guys committed, and some years you won't. Um, and But as a program, when you have those, those core values that stay consistent, um, it'll always kind of come back around for you. And, you know, those kids will remember that the rest of their lives. You know, let's be honest, uh, you guys kind of alluded to that earlier that, yeah, some kids will go on and play college ball, but really hitting the pro level, that's one in a million. I mean, it's a low percentage. And really, they will remember a coach. And they may, even at the time, coach may have had to bench them or may have had to discipline them. 
But you know what? Uh, I've heard so many kids at being an old social worker myself, sometimes you have to have that tough love for some of those kids, and that makes a huge difference. Speaking of that, I grew up watching UCLA and the whole Johnny Wooden thing, and I do recall years ago when Sydney, I'm going to really date myself here, okay? <laughs> Sydney Wicks and Curtis Rowe were benched and in a big game. Do you remember that, Terry? Yeah. And it was very unpopular, to be quite honest with you. But I'll tell you what, that year it made such a huge difference for that team. And they went on, of course, 10 national championships. How hard is it as a coach to have to do things like that? I bet it's tough. It is tough because at the end of the day, um, you are a competitor as a coach and you want to win. Um, but I think when you understand the bigger picture, um, when you look at the percentages, coaches has been coaching for 18 years, he's had one um, that really had a scholarship. Yeah. And you have how many teams have the opportunity to even get to the state playoffs. So those things are fun, and you want to win, and you want to be successful. Um, but like you said, if you can teach those life lessons, um, for me, I have a lot. I feel a lot better than um, the player that that won or the player that went to college is when the one that comes back and says, "Hey, thanks for helping me out." Because you taught me how to do these skills, now sure. I have the job that I want. Because you taught me these skills, now I know how to be a better husband or a better father. Those are the things that are way more important than a win. Because uh, at the end of the day, you really don't remember those. Um, and it's unfortunate that sometimes parents don't see it that way. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> my son played ball. <laughs> so I understand. And as a parent, you're sitting there going, okay, what are they saying? You know, but really, you guys are thinking the big picture. And sometimes, and we're not putting parents down. They're competitive, too. But sometimes they don't always see the big picture when their kid is playing. And that's got to be tough also. Uh, preparation. I know because I've talked to you know several of you guys over the years and of course Coach Whitehead in the past and uh, a lot of these kids are gym rats and that's what's fun to hear they've just got the bug and and that shows on the court you can see Brett and I talked about and the kids were talking about this year about how the team looked at themselves as a family because they spend so much time together when in the off season what do you encourage the players to do? I mean, generally, not only the physical aspect, maybe there's some mental aspects, academics, uh, maybe spending time together. What do you encourage for the off season for preparation for the season to come? Well, uh, first of all, I, I think you can't you can't be a good high school basketball player. Anymore if you're just going to play for three months out of the year. I think that's pretty obvious. And it's that way with all the sports. And, uh, and what, we, what, I, what I tell our guys is uh, the spring and summer, that's your time. That's, that's, that's the time that you use to make yourself a better individual player. And you got to use it. You have to. You have to. And, and, you know, a lot of them play on club teams and AAU teams, and, and that's, that's good. They, they get a lot of experience, a lot of game experience, but it – you know, playing AAU and playing club, that's, that's still, it's about, you know, it's about me. And I said, you know, when the season, when November gets here, now it's about us. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, I, I, anything they do in the off season is good. Uh, we've got all kinds of individual programs for them, and we encourage them to play for their club teams and all that. And that's, that's their time, and then once it gets closer to the season, then it becomes our time. That's kind of the philosophy we yeah, yeah. The the off season is, uh, you know, you're not going to have many good players that don't put in the extra time, extra extra effort, extra work. And I think coaches know just by the the time spent, the work ethic, who's who's going to have a good year ahead of time. Uh, and, and when you start to get those special teams and special groups, is when uh, they start going into the gym together, and they're going out of their way to do things together. And yeah. Uh, everybody's playing AAU basketball now. It seems like sports in general are just more um, specialized. Kids are playing one, maybe two sports, and so you know that off-season stuff, AAU ball or Legion baseball. Uh, kids are really into that. But man, if if you don't have kids uh, dedicated to coming into your gym and spending time uh, with his teammates in, in your program, uh, then you know it's it's not quite as helpful. But there, there's a direct correlation between the guys that work really hard and have success and uh, the guys that kind of just get by because, let's be real, uh, when practice starts, 
everybody's practicing. Right. Everybody's spending the same amount of time at practice. It's the extra time that, that's going to put you over the top. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think, just like they said, everybody plays AAU now. Uh, there's, there's teams that pop up everywhere. I remember when I was in high school, there was two teams, Carl Chaos and Carl Chaos, like in the hall, yeah. there were three teams. Now you look, there's a two or three teams in every city. Yeah. Um, so wow. everybody plays, everybody's in the gym. Um, so one thing I try to tell my, my guys is really, um, you have to put in the work, um, but you have to do a little extra if you want to be better. Um, if everybody's doing it, what are you doing extra? Are yes. you studying some film? Um, are you doing things as a team? Um, are you uh, getting in the weight room? Are you getting in extra conditioning? Those type of things. Because uh, we know they're going to be in the gym because I have a group, uh, especially right now, that are gym rats. So I yeah, know they're going to get in the gym, which is great. Um, but if you want to achieve at a higher level than what everybody else is doing, you got to do something extra. So we try to talk about those little things that they can do um, to really try to get a little bit of an edge on, on the competition. You know, uh, as you know, all know, we, we've talked, we, we cover a lot of American Legion baseball, and one of the things that we hear with a lot of the club teams that are out there is nutrition. I'm amazed, even my, my nephew, Gavin Miller, who played around this area for a while and did some college ball, the nutritional aspect, and it's a science, and, and it's happening in high schools. I mean, these kids are taking all kinds of th good stuff. I mean, it's all really good things. It's not bad stuff. So I'm amazed at how the game has changed. We were talking about the cultural change and the science that's behind everything now. And it's, it's I think, good for not only for you guys, but, you know, it, it allows a player to play longer, too. And, I, and obviously less injuries that way. I imagine you have to deal with all those issues, too, with injuries and so forth. I do want to talk later on about injuries and the subject of concussions. That's going to come up in a little bit. You are watching uh, Sports Blow, basically. This is our first attempt here. We're at Crepes and Creams in the Westlake Shopping Center. We're going to come back and talk to the coaches more about what the game of basketball is looking like here in northern Colorado, the talent level, and maybe some of the styles of play. So we'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Blow, and this is our first attempt here at a coach's interview show. And I'm Mike Gray. I haven't said who I am on purpose. I don't want you to come hunting me down here. But we're live here at Crepes and Creams of the Westlake Shopping Center. They are open Monday through Saturday from 11 to 7. Also watch for their new store hours. They usually start keeping it open a little bit later as the weather gets warm. And why? Because of their great ice cream. So again, they do savory crepes, dessert crepes, salads, soups. It's all fresh. And the coaches are going to get a little taste of that coming up here in just a moment. I can't wait to see the bibs and the salivating coming. So stay tuned. You're going to get to see some of that. But uh, anyways, back to what we've been talking about, culture and so forth. We have Coach Troy Grafey, Terry Anderson, and Brett Clopfill here from the respective teams here in the North. Speaking of the North, over the years, coaches, I have called for seven years through Comcast, and we've seen some terrific games. 
especially cross-town rivalry stuff. And then recently, as you know, we were doing the Greeley Invitational here at Greeley West High School. There was some great basketball, and it was nice to see some teams coming in from Wyoming. And obviously, our team's doing very well against the number, at that time, the number one team in Wyoming. So that being said, you've all seen different levels, some a little bit longer. How is the talent level? It seems like it's growing here in the north that I've seen. And then we're going to talk about the style of play. So what have been your observations as far as the talent level here in the north? I, th I think individual skill levels improved immensely uh, in the last, certainly in the last five years and probably in the last 10 years. Um, and I think the teams, I think the teams are more competitive as well. It's not, uh, there's certainly no gimmies. Uh, you know, Terry can tell you in our, our conference, uh, it seemed like anybody, you know, the one team long long was considerably better than everybody else. But everybody else, uh, you, had to, you had to be prepared each night going in if you want, uh, if you wanted a chance. So I think I think the the talent level has increased a little bit. What I'm seeing, I think, is. Uh has to do with the AAU basketball and kind of the year-round uh, culture we have now. The kids are just, they're playing more, uh, and, and like I said, they're kind of more specialized now. So, uh, yeah, I think there's um, talents better, uh, which makes the teams better, and, and it, it's definitely brought a level of competitiveness. And as far as locally, I just think we see things kind of go in cycles. I'm sure as long as Coach has been here that uh, you know, a few years ago, Coach had a, a really good team at Central, and Several, this yeah. year we, we had a, a talented group, and I think Coach is really looking forward to next year mm -hmm. at Northridge. So it goes in cycles, but I, I just think that kids playing so much AAU basketball, getting extra games, and, um, you know, it's it can only, uh, the experience only make you better and more competitive. So, I, yeah, I, I think the talent's definitely getting better uh, in this area. Yeah, I agree. If you look at... Um, really all the sports from uh, 3A, 2A, all the levels, how many Northern uh, Colorado teams were in the football playoffs at all the levels. Um, and, and this year, uh, the basketball teams, um, I just think all around the basketball here in the Northern, or really all sports in the Northern has improved. And I think it's just like you said, it's, it's really because of just the skill development. Um, everybody's kind of putting that time in. <coughs> AAU has definitely helped basketball. Um, but I just think that there's a lot of a lot of talent up here in Northern, and it's, it's competitive every single night. Like like Coach Grafey mentioned, um, we definitely don't have any, any gimmies in our in our conference, uh, which is good. And I think when you have that competitiveness, um, it makes the players want to work harder, and that just continues to, to help the, the, the skill grow and, and the teams to be better. So um, I think it's it's definitely a lot of talent right now in Northern Colorado. Terry, I want to come back to you uh, as far as skill level. Execution. I've noticed that two things that the winning teams do very well. One is they play very good defense, especially here in the north. We just called, obviously we've been down in uh, Boulder and called a game down there. We've seen Fairview. Uh, we saw Greeley West, of course, go to George Washington. And we've seen execution and defense seems to be the key now as far as more of a transition game. I've noticed more versus a uh, you know, straight out, let's just go out and shoot a lot of balls and hope that they fall. I see a lot of baskets being made from defensive games. We saw that with the Broncos this last year. It was all defense that led to offense. Is that a trend that you guys see uh, in basketball now? Um, I think it is the kind of more high-paced high -paced game. A lot of the trends in basketball, they, like in most sports, they kind of trickle down from the NBA uh, in the higher levels. And that's how that game has kind of gone to, um, as they've done some things to, to kind of highlight, like Coach Griffey mentioned earlier, those fun and highlight and exciting plays happen, and a lot happen in transition. Um, and so they've made some adjustments to the game, and when uh, they make the adjustments, the players see it, and they like it, and then they want to be in transition, and they want to get steals and do those type of things. Um, and so I think it has transitioned somewhat to that, um, but I know uh, since I was playing and growing up, and especially being around Coach Boyle, um, his staples of basketball were always defense and rebound. Yes. And so when you look at, at the end of the day, the old adage that uh, defense wins championships, <coughs> it's extremely true. Um, you look at some of the teams uh, at all levels, from college to the NBA, the top teams, uh, they might 
do some good things on offense, and they might be highlighted. Um, like the, like the um, Golden State Warriors right now, they're rolling on, and everybody's talking about offense, but we're, they're one of the top teams defensively in the league also. Um, it doesn't get mentioned because the fun stuff and the yeah. side stuff happens yeah. on the offensive end, um, but they're getting done on the defensive end. So those teams, like you said, that can execute and pay attention on that end of the floor yeah. are usually the ones that have some success. Yeah, I, I just am amazed at what I've seen here in the last five to six years. It seems like defense in all levels of girls too. I mean, when we call the girls games, very defensive minded and, and boy, there's some scrapping going on out there in some of the games. You feel like put the pads on, you know? So that being said, I want to talk more about what you encourage your players to do. And, and really, whoever wants to answer this, you have several players we saw at George Washington recently when we talked to some of those players, two had been rec uh, recruited right then and there. One was a sophomore and one was a junior and they're ready to sign him right then. So that being said, does that help or hurt a player if they're being recruited early, say in their sophomore or junior year? Do they tend to like the bonus baby in pro sports where they go, okay, I got it in the bag now? Or does that motivate them, do you think? Well, uh I don't see how it can it can hurt. I really don't. I think that uh, it's motivational for for the kid and for his teammates to see a kid being rewarded like that. But you know, for the most part, we're not going to coach a lot of guys like that. Uh, we were lucky enough at West to have two kids that will go on and play small college basketball, and uh, I, I think it it probably helped them to take a little bit of pressure off of their senior year, not have to worry about that. But I, I don't see it as a negative. Uh, I see it as more of a motivational thing and uh, maybe something that will relax a guy instead of uh, pushing so much his senior year and maybe you know, pressing trying to do too much. So uh, I really don't see it as, as an issue much and frankly not one that we'll uh, have to deal with too, too much <laughs> around this part. But it's, guys are coming along and, and I think we'll, we'll have some uh, kids in the area in the, new, in the near future that will get recruited to play. But, not too many of them. Right. But else? Okay. I want to ask you, too. I know that a lot of the different coaches and players, they're prepared, especially families, they put a lot of money into club sports. And I just heard that on 104.3 The Fan and how uh, there's a lot of money being spent by families in different sports and, and with the intent that they get noticed. Now, we've heard up here in the north, and I've had my nephew and others that got recruited and played college ball, that there are certain years that they really watch the players, whether it's football, basketball. Let's take, it, obviously, basketball. When do they start scouting high school basketball players for potentially for college? I think it depends on uh, what level the college is. Um, uh, a school like Kentucky, They've been scouting kids forever. So they see the talent coming up. They know what's going on. Now, a school like Lamar uh, Junior College, uh, they're getting kids that are in their seniors or junior year that probably got passed up um, or probably that are late developers or that might they might see them as kind of a diamond in the rough that might develop when they get to college. Um, so it kind of depends on the level of the institution okay. uh, that's recruiting. Exactly. Um, but you never know because there's those kids that – uh, they're mature and they develop in, as a freshman. Um, and then there's those kids that grow four or five inches over their junior to senior year. Yes. Um, so they're always, colleges, at least when I was there, we're always recruiting at all ages. Um, we're always looking at kids no matter what class it is. Um, we definitely have time when we know uh, we have two or three open spots. Or in four years, we're going to have four open spots. Uh, so we got to look a little bit more. So it kind of just depends. Um, but as a college, when I was there, we were always recruiting all ages, really. Especially when you get to high school at the technical recruited age, um, you're, there's going to be schools out there that are looking. Do they look, uh, Terry, at stats? I know they look at stats, obviously. Or do they still look at film or a combination? Uh, a combination of both. Do they? Um, stats can be deceiving. Um, if you have, you're averaging 20 points, hey, it might look great, but if you're the only one your team taking shots, you're taking 25 yeah. shots a game, Yes. Um, then it, it can throw you off a little bit. So And the competition level exactly, too. Yeah. And the competition level also. Yeah. So you might be able to um, 
look good on paper, but then when you get the film or somebody sits down and sees you in person, um, that really is going to tell the true sign of something. You know, uh, adding to that, skills are very important that they look at. Do they, and other coaches too, pipe in if you'd like, or Terry, you're doing great, is do they look at the character of the students? Do they look at the academics? I know with my son in playing, I always pushed him, keep your grades up. You know, keep your grades up, which he did. And it really helped him for many reasons. Uh, do they look at those things also? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think from the grade standpoint, uh, I was talking to one of the coaches in our conference, um, and he has a great, a really good player. And so I was asking him, so, hey, how is he getting looked at? Is he getting the schools call? And he said, yeah, they call um, first time until I tell them what their GPA is, and they don't call again. Um, oh, wow. So okay. that's a huge piece that uh, I think parents definitely need to understand. The players need to understand. We harp on them. Um, absolutely, that they need to keep their grades up if they even want to think about having a chance uh, to play at the next level. Uh, but character is also a big piece. Uh, if you ask Coach, Coach Boyle when it comes to recruiting, uh, the two top things he looks at, uh, number one is their character, mm -hmm. and number two is their love for the game. Um, so if your character's not there, um, you don't have a, a shot at a place like CU. And I think that's a lot of coaches across the country um, because there's so much talent and there's so much skill out there that they don't, you don't need to deal with the headache. You don't need to deal with those kids. Exactly. Um, because if they're going to show that bad character off the court, when it comes to crunch time on the court, it's, it's going to come out. Yes. And it's going to hurt them and it's going to hurt their team. Um, and so it's, that's also a huge piece uh, that comes into play when it comes to recruiting. And, and think about the, you know, it's so competitive. There's only, what, 300 Division One schools and then, you know, that many Division Two or whatever. Those guys who have, who have achieved, uh, attained that status as a head coach at that level, they're really good at what they do, really good. And there's a lot of people that want those jobs. And so they're not going to recruit somebody who's going to put their job in jeopardy. You know, that, uh, we tell our kids that all the time. If, it's, if, I've got, if I've got a choice between you and player B, and player B's got a 3.5 and you got a 3.0, who's coach going to take? Yeah. You know, if, 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 if this guy's got uh, impeccable character and you've had a couple of scrapes with a couple teachers, who's he going to recruit? All those things definitely matter. Uh, you know, I, to add to what you're saying, Coach, is I've heard when scouts, for some other kids that I've known over the years, and they not only, you know, look at the numbers and what they've done in school, but they start asking around. They actually talk to family members or friends and different things, or they look at the involvement that the student has had throughout their career. Maybe they're doing extracurricular things that are positive, you know. So, I, you know, it's the game and recruiting has changed a lot. Yeah, absolutely. As, as like Coach was saying, as, as, a, as a college coach, your livelihood is in the hands of these 15 players. Yeah. Um, so... If you pick the wrong 15, you might not have a job next year. Yeah. So yeah. you're very diligent in terms of what you're recruiting, the type of players you're recruiting, the type of students you're recruiting, um, because they, it's unfortunate that your, your hands and your family, how they eat might be in the hands of 17, 18 year olds. That's a good point. Um, and so it is, it's an intense process, but like Coach said, when the coaches that are at that level, um, they're, they're great at what they do, and they take everything into consideration. Very much so. And, I, and you were fortunate this year. You had a great group of kids that academically just blew me out. I thought, wow, I've never even seen a 4.0 personally. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> to hear these guys averaging 4.0 or whatever, I bet it's just fun to coach not only good kids but intelligent kids. Yeah, it was a, a real blessing for us. Um, when, when the kids are taking care of their stuff off the floor, there's a a really good chance they're going to be responsible on the floor. Uh, you know, 4.0 kids, uh, we didn't have to worry about them being late to practice or meetings or, you know, making a fuss in, in uh, class. Uh, there just weren't many of those uh, issues. And so, you know, responsibility is the same thing on the floor as it is off the floor. If you can count on a kid to do something right, uh, it's so helpful. And, as a coach, that's uh, it's it's just a breath of fresh air to not have to worry about those little things that when all you have to do is worry about coaching basketball, uh, then it gets fun. And it's really, when you're not, you know, babysitting and worrying about uh, responsibility issues, then we really like our job. It's it's the, when we have to keep our thumb on somebody, check on them, or hear negative things, you know, then it it uh, just becomes 
uh, an issue for your program. And so now we were really lucky to have those kids that were responsible, uh, high character kids. And I'm hoping that uh, our younger kids learn from them because uh, you know, they'll be next up. The gray hairs are coming, coach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, 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 it's been my experience that uh, mm -hmm. when, you've got, when you've got a team that's winning a lot of games, often it's because you've got kids that are taking care of things in the classroom and off the court that the uh, that responsibility that accountability it's not just in the gym it's in, mm -hmm. in all facets of their life yeah um, so that those things tend to go hand in hand they the really day. do and and a lot of it is raising kids uh, you know be, uh, being an old social worker myself uh, if the parents aren't doing their job and, and, you know, giving them some of those life skills as well as the coaches. I mean, the coaches obviously are a big part of it and schools are. But if the parents haven't grown up, I mean, obviously you see the fruit of that, if you will, as well. Uh, a couple, one more main question, then I want to talk about what you guys see for your own teams this future. If you want to highlight maybe a, a player or two that you were just really proud of. It doesn't necessarily mean that they shot great shots. Maybe they just showed a lot of character in, in whatever they did on or off the court. I'll, I'll get to that, so I'm alluding to that. But now I'm going to show my age one more time. I'm going to show my hand here. Uh, the whole Johnny Wooden thing. And you and I talked a little bit, Brett, before uh, we came on here today is the three-point shot is huge today. And I, I've even said this when I'm announcing, live by the three, die by the three, it's an old phrase. But I've noticed if teams, sometimes they'll come out and they'll shoot three-point shots. When I was a kid growing up and watching Johnny Wooden's teams, they emphasized the 17 to 20 foot jump shot and doing bank shots and even you know doing baby hooks and hook shots and so forth. We've kind of semi gotten away from that and, and you think about the teams of the past, they would roll up a lot of points without the three-point shot. Is the three-point shot, I mean, it can be a blessing or a curse. What are you thinking on that? Well, it's here to stay. Yeah, oh yeah, it's not going away, <laughs> we're not, yeah. We're not going back to the old No, days. no, yeah. Uh, I think that kids practice it so much. Uh, I mean, we, I, I watched Steph Curry knocking down almost half court shots yeah. in a in a perfect shooting stroke. I, I just think kids kids shoot it uh, enough that it has become a pretty high percentage shot for for the kids who, who work at it. And yeah. uh, I think good teams have found a way to incorporate it into their style and um, I, I frankly I think it's nice. I think it, it keeps the floor spread uh, yeah. mm. and it, it gives it gives kids a chance to maybe it give, it gives some kids a chance to play that maybe might not have have had that chance mm. maybe 30 years ago. Okay. Well, well, and uh, there's just not many dominant big guys anymore. They're so hard to find. So, you know, spreading the floor and getting those looks, and there's it's just more guard oriented for whatever reason. I, I don't know. There's just not a lot of big talented guys in, in our area for sure. Um, so, you know, how do you make up for that? And if you have a team that can shoot it well, boy, it's, it's a huge advantage. Uh, if you have a team that doesn't shoot it so well, it's, it's going to be a problem. But a lot of coaches have found, I think, that you don't have to shoot such a high percentage from three as you do from two because they're worth more. But the problems that come with it are it's not such an aggressive play. It's, it's the easiest shot to find, easiest shot to take, and you don't get fouled doing it. So you have to really... Uh, pick and choose if that's something your team is going to be good at and you, you know you want to push them to do that more if it's something you want to limit but I, I I just noticed that in our state as a whole uh, there's not a lot of good big guys so I think that's why so many teams have really uh, gone to to more perimeter shooting and just more perimeter oriented yeah I mean all if you look at all the analytics the basketball analytics it just shows um, how important and how much the game has changed to the three ball. Because if, yeah. if I'm shooting threes, I can make three threes, whereas I'm going two, I got to make six to get there. And if I can get that percentage where I'm shooting around 40% uh, three, it shows the advantage that the three ball can have throughout a game. Yeah. Um, but that's if you're shooting at that percentage. That's if you have the players that have put in the work um, to be able to shoot it. There's a lot of teams out there that <laughs> shoot it all day and they don't have that. They don't have that skill, they don't have that talent. Yeah. A lot of players um, that haven't put in the work, if you look at a Steph Curry who probably shoots besides yeah. practice an extra, makes an extra 500 a, a day. 
um, where our, our players, they sometimes, and a lot of kids think they just have to go to practice and shoot it um, in open gym and shoot it when they go to the rec and think that they're a three-point shooter. Well, <laughs> that's not the case. Right. Um, so, if, But if you do have the players and the teams that understand how much work you have to put in, um, and you do have them shooting at a high percentage, you, you do have that advantage um, because it is that, that extra point um, and it goes a long way in some games. And you can you see in games where, where teams usually make comebacks, it's because they knock down some big time threes. Um, if you don't have that aspect um, and you're down six points late in the game, it, it's a lot to be able to get three baskets to get back in it where you can hit a couple uh, or hit one and then it's a one possession game. Um, hit another and tie it up. So there is advantage um, if the players understand the work that it takes to, to be good at it. Um, but it is a disadvantage because nowadays I think everybody thinks they need to shoot. Yeah. You have those. You you have players that are traditionally big men, um, four or five forwards that are usually down low. Now they want to step out and shoot it also, <laughs> and because it's the cool, it's the fun, it's the highlight. Yeah. Of what Coach alluded to earlier. Especially at a buzzer, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How, many, how yeah. many times have we seen that Steph Curry three in the past week yes. um, that he hit? So that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to be able to shoot that big time shot. Um, and so there's there's positives and negatives to it. But like Coach said, it's here to stay. Um, and so everybody just got to make that adjustment to it. I could, uh, we could keep talking about this. I know we're pushing 7 o'clock, and I promised you guys. Uh, but maybe another day. Uh, it would be fun to have you guys back another time, maybe during the season or whatever you guys want to do. But, you know, the players, and I'm not, I'm not looking for a comment here, but I'm amazed at the kids now that can hit big shots in high school. We saw that with one of, uh, several, all of your teams. I've seen that. I can honestly say each one of your teams over the seven years that I've been calling here have taken and done big moments and hit big shots or made big steals or whatever, and they do it so calmly. You know, it's like it's natural for them. You know, it's they're they're used to kind of being on the spotlight a little bit. So I think it's just the culture and the experiences and just all that has come together and all the hard work. And and it's one thing to make those long shots in practice, but when everybody's watching. It's a whole different ball game, and the nerves start coming into play. Final thought, and I'd like a comment from each one of you. You can either talk about a player or a certain situation that you were really proud of, or maybe it was just maybe the team came back, or maybe a player played his heart out, may not have scored a lot of points, but showed a lot of character. If you would highlight one or as many players as you would, and then the second part of that question is, how does the future look for this next season? We're always curious to hear what you think about your team for the future for the next season. So whoever wants to start. Yeah, uh, I guess we don't have a specific um, single player, but a, a game that stands out to me was towards the end of the season, we, uh, we went down to Monarch, and that's a team that traditionally we haven't had, uh, can't even say much success, any success with really since we've been in the league. Um, so we went down there, and you know we didn't play a lot of guys all year. So uh, you know fatigue was setting in towards the end of the year, and uh, just one of those games, things weren't going right, foul trouble, and uh, we have four seniors that um, you know somehow f you know, we found a way to scratch claw back. I think we were down eight or nine in the fourth, and we were there. Uh, yeah. Get it, get it to overtime, and just made a lot of big shots in that game. But just kind of a a, a sign of how far. Our program uh, came, um, especially this year, to, to overcome that and win a game there where uh, we haven't been able to win uh, historically since we've been in the league. So that was a game that stood out. And uh, as far as our, our program and uh, where it's going, we, we lose a lot. You know, we lose uh, so much on and off the floor with our seniors. So uh, as noted earlier, uh, every year is a new challenge. Um, and so I, I, we look at it as a completely different challenge. And uh, when you lose that much, it's, it, it opens up a lot of opportunity for, for your younger players. And so, you know, I look forward to who, who's going to step up and put in that time in the off season and commit and uh, be that great teammate and uh, learn from the things that we were able to do this year and fill some of those uh, shoes moving forward. But uh, really excited about the guys that we graduated and some of the young talent we have and just seeing who's going to step up and fill those shoes. So that, that's about where we're at. Great. Terry. 
Um, so probably the highlight moment for my, my season, it's an interesting one. We were um, playing at Greeley Central this year, um, and the, the girls team played before us, uh, went to overtime. Yeah. Um, so when you have those uh, doubleheader games of fans uh, really come out, yeah. uh, being a cross rivalry game, there's a lot of people there. Um, and in between the games, before our ga before the boys game, um, there was a, a unified basketball game between oh, yeah. Um, um, yeah. the, the special education students mm -hmm. um, from Northridge and I think it was from, was it from Central? I think so. Yeah, it's so the two teams. Yeah, yeah. I um, that, And you know. so it was between the games um, and just the energy in the gym, the crowd in the gym, the excitement in the gym for those students and those players. Um, to be able to play in front of that huge crowd, um, to have everyone cheering for them. I know um, my team and, and Coach Grayfield's team, um, when, when the, the players were making shots, they're up, they're cheering, they're high-fiving. Um, and those are the moments that I, that I remember in, in seasons because I think it helped my players kind of grow up a little bit, um, really see how blessed they were, see how fortunate they were um, as players, um, as individuals. So for me, I thought that was a really special moment for our program and, and for me and a highlight that I, that I would definitely remember um, just for them um, and for our team. What we have coming back is we have um, a really talented group. Uh, we have a group that's really coming into their own um, as players. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been putting in a lot of work for a long time and I think all that work's really starting to, to come to fruition for them. Um, and so. It's going to go two ways for us, I think. I think either as a group they're going to come together mm -hmm. um, and, and figure out the strength and, and the ability that they have as a team, mm -hmm. or um, I think we might struggle a little bit because they're all figuring it out, they're all extremely talented, um, and they're worried about them and their talent and trying to get theirs. Yes. Um, and, and who's going to be the top dog. Um, and having that mindset, instead of having the mindset of we need to do this together, um, and if the team has success, then I individually will have success. Mm -hmm. um, and so it'll be interesting to see this summer um, how they continue to grow, how they continue to develop, um, who kind of steps up as a leader um, and really tries to get them unified and keep them on the same page. If we're going to have them working out together, um, are we going to have them doing weights together, yeah. going to lunch together, and really coming together as a unit to really want to do something this year, mm -hmm. or are they kind of going to be on their own trying to, to stake their own individual claim? i got to add before uh, before you come in, Troy, uh, I interviewed after the George Washington game a couple of players there, mm -hmm. and they said the turning point is just exactly what you said. They literally had troubles just working together, a lot of talent. I mean, these kids can shoot. Oh, yeah from 100 feet if you let them, you know. But the thing that made the difference was they had a team meeting and they decided, okay, it's not about individual anymore. And they were about getting the pass off to another player that was open. They didn't care who it was. And, it, you know, they just fed it. And that's when they went 8-0 and in league play. And that made their season. They attribute that one moment where they hit the crisis, you know, and said, okay, we got to come together as players and not gripe at each other and try, like you say, get my own. They decided to work as a team, and then they went on, and you saw what they did as far as 5A is concerned. Good team. So I'm sorry, Troy, I didn't mean to take your, your spot there, but I wanted to agree with you on that. And that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, that's why I think that's, that's why we love basketball. It's not about me. It's about what we can accomplish together. And the most beautiful seasons are those when uh, – a group achieves more than they really thought they could have. Mm -hmm. We hear the, the phrase, the, the sum is greater than the total of its parts. And if you can have one of those kind of seasons, those are the ones that you remember forever. And I think that, that you, you had one of yeah. those this year. And, that was so, yes. and while we, I, I, I want to make sure I, I, it's been so gratifying, maybe, maybe not, maybe gratifying is not the word I should be using, but I think both these guys have done such a great job of not just having good teams, but building a program, um, I, I, I'm so impressed with what they've done with with their with their squads and how they've developed. So I want to make sure I acknowledge what a great job. Appreciate it. Not just having good teams, but building a quality program. Um, in terms of our our, our season was just uh, we were just wildly inconsistent, and we played we played a bunch of young kids. We had uh, we had one game this season where we had our entire 
top eight together. You know, we had injuries, we had kids that had concussions, and we had uh, we had a couple academic difficulties, and you know, we had we had sit so. It, it was a tough year in that regard, and uh, some nights we would play pretty well, and other nights we just looked horrible. But I thought what was so great about this group of kids that we had is uh, they never quit. You know, when you lose a bunch of games, it's so easy just to punt, just to give it up, and you know maybe look forward to baseball or you know lose focus, lose lose heart in what we're trying to accomplish. And our guys just never did. Uh, one of the, the, the best practice, one of the best practices we had this season was the next to the last practice of the year when, you know, we're getting ready to play our last game. And yeah. those guys were still fighting and still battling and still working to get better. And I was so proud of them in that regard. And, uh, uh, so, and I think that says a lot about the character of the kids that we had. Uh, they were fun to be around right up till the end. We didn't, we didn't have any, any kind of issues with those kids. Yeah. Uh, and so that was, that was really nice. And uh, you know, next year we'll see. We we played a bunch of young kids. A bunch of kids got some good some good varsity experience. But one of the things we were we're, we're fond of saying in our program is just because you're a year older doesn't necessarily mean you're a year better. <laughs> so we'll see what kind of work they do yeah. this summer. See how they grow together, and uh, we'll come ready to go. You know, coach, I got to add to that because we called several of your games throughout the year and. Uh, the fight in your kids they never gave up and at times you know that height or whatever it was I won't say disadvantage but they just all the way until the final buzzer and I was I was proud of them I thought wow these are some great kids here and they kept it up you know and over the years I mean really yours has been the shining program really over the years I mean you have set a standard here with a number of playoff teams so uh, again that's uh, high kudos and praise from you going to these two coaches. I'm impressed myself. So, good stuff, and we always look forward to seeing what you're going to pull out of the hat uh, next year. It's always fun to watch, and of course, you two guys, uh, it's fun to watch you guys with your teams, and I'm expecting to see some great things out of Northridge. We, I also commented several times about the talent level that you guys have. You have some great young players there, and of course, Brett, you had a great season, so uh, we expect to see some great things coming from all of your teams. Well, that's going to do it, guys. Uh, we thank you. We took the, the coaches a little bit long, but uh, just I could have gone on and on and have lots of questions, but maybe in the future, uh, if they want to come back, we'll treat them to another crepe. And this has been our first show. We're going to call it a night here from Crepes and Creams. Don't forget, they're open Monday through Saturday from 11 to 7. Watch for their new store hours. That's going to be coming up soon. You can go to Crepes and Cream's Facebook site and find out all that information. It's all fresh and it's all good for you. So for the different coaches, Troy Grafey, Terry Anderson, and Brett Klopfeld, we thank them for coming. We'll see you another time. Uh, we're going to have a baseball game coming up this Saturday. You can watch it at noon from Eagle Crest High School. We hope to see you then. You have a pleasant good evening. That was awesome. I appreciate